Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And looks like one after one, the hacker groups are coming back from vacation after we had Hank Tor last week. This week, Brad is talking about Quackbot. Quackbot uh, has not been seen since a few days before Christmas. And well, on Tuesday, it came back with the latest wave of malicious spam. The spam is typically a zip attached if you open this latest wave, you'll get an Excel file that claims to be a DocuSign document and then it tricks you into enabling macros by telling you, well, in order to sign the document, you need to enable macros. By enabling macros, it will then download a DLL that will load additional malware via HTTPS. As usual with Pratt's diary, you'll find all uh, the evidence uh, packet captures linked in the diary. And researchers at the JSOF Research Lab found a number of vulnerabilities in DNS Mask. DNS Mask is a very popular DNS forwarder. You often find it in small firewalls and routers, typically Linux or BSD based devices. And all it typically does is it will take DNS queries from a network and then forward it uh, to either a specific name server or just to act as a recursive resolver. The vulnerabilities discovered here are really falling into two categories. There are a couple of issues that make it easy to spoof responses. For example, the source port is not really randomized. Only 64 different source ports are being used by DNS mask, leading to essentially the well-known Kaminsky attack from a few years back. In addition, uh, Resolver is supposed to verify that a response, uh, not just the query ID matches, but also the query included in the response does match uh, the query in the request. Well, uh, this match is done not very well. There is a simple CRC32 check which of course could easily be spoofed. And probably I think the worst flaw here is something that I remember from back in the day with Bind and uh, Microsoft at DNS. There was an interesting combination like this where DNS mask is not verifying the response correctly if it comes from a name server that's considered as a forwarder. Now, forwarders are usually somewhat trusted name servers, but responses still have to be checked and here the Belivik check is not done quite correctly. It's possible uh, to include bad C names that uh, then can be used to insert invalid, essentially spoofed responses. In addition to uh, these spoofing vulnerabilities, there are also a number of buffer overflows that could lead to arbitrary code execution. As a very first step, uh, DNS mask should not be listening on uh, the outside interface of your router or firewall. It should only listen for requests from uh, the local network and definitely do apply updates as they become available. And Checkpoint is reporting of a new piece of Linux malware that is exploiting a number of fairly recent flaws, uh, three flaws in particular, uh, vulnerability in the TerraMaster TOS. Uh, this is an operating system, a Linux derivative used for data storage devices. The vulnerability 2020-2811. 88 was released late in December. Also a vulnerability, a deserialization vulnerability in the Send framework. I did mention this vulnerability. It has been made public on January 3rd this year. And finally, a vulnerability in the Liferay portal, also a deserialization vulnerability. I believe that one is a bit older. It was made public March last year. 
And then we have an interesting uh, password bypass in the Linux screensaver that apparently was triggered by kids who played with a locked desktop and simultaneously hit random keys in the virtual keyboard and the real keyboard. Well, apparently it has been difficult to reproduce this issue. Maybe they should let a cat jump on the keyboard that may have a similar effect, but uh, similar issues with uh, screen savers and screen locks have been reported in the past where pressing certain keys at the right time in the right order did magically unlock the screen. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.